Hello Yu-Gi-Oh! players, I'm the RJB0, welcome to Yu-Gi-Oh! in Plaid Pajamas, also known as playing Chain Beat. So, I've been gone for a while and I'm sorry about that. I've had a lot to do since the Clark College Independent is going into its final production cycle of the season, which means I've got deadline after deadline coming up. Um, so I've just had a lot of busy things to do, hunting down interviews, etc. So I haven't had a whole lot of time for the Yu-Gi-Oh's. However, I thought that it would be appropriate if my first video was to all my Chain Beat vi viewers, since I think that you guys make up the majority of my viewership, and that's great, because I love Chain Beat, and I love that there's so many people who love Chain Beat. But the point is, I'll be putting out more videos uh, later this week, and particularly after next week, after we go into, after we've met the deadlines for the final issue then I'll have a lot more free time than I did before. So, on to the video. This format sucks. Surprise, surprise. Like, I know, pretty much that's something that people aren't going to be disputing unless they're a bad player who are just happy that they now have a deck, again, that can just win the game by buying it. Um, it, That isn't the point of this video. The point is, this format sucks, especially for chain beat players. Why? Well, because, um, well, Dragosec. Really, it's Dragosec. We're actually really fortunate that 3-axis Fire Fist has not become more of a thing, because if 3-axis Fire Fist becomes more of a thing, then that means that we're going to have a bad format, and then Tanky's gonna get hit hard, and then we're going to have even less searchability than we did before, which Konami seems to love just whittling it away at for this deck. So I'm kind of glad that 3-axis hasn't come out yet. This deck's actually going to have a pretty decent 3-axis matchup, so I'm glad that we're saving that for a fall, for the fall lookout for that. But the point is, this format still kind of sucks because of Dragosac. Why is Dragosac a problem? Well, I've set up that trio, that triangle thing, um, in another video about the kind of rock-paper-scissors things that goes on between control, stun, and aggro in a format. When you have a format like this one that's predominantly um, control, stun decks like Chain B um, do very well because stun has more aggressive plays that control can't really deal with. And the difference between stun and control, if you haven't watched that video, is stun has a more aggressive strategy than control whereby you try to keep your opponent from getting off any plays, whereas control allows your opponent to get off plays and then takes them down bit by bit again. Um, so that's the difference between the two, and it's actually a really big difference that you'll see if you watch my video about the triangle of meta patterns. So check that out. Anyway, so that's been great for Chain Beat. The problem is we've got this nice little big deck. I just totally contradicted myself. This nice deck we call Dragosac. And Dragosac, unfortunately, is an aggro deck of the highest degree, which stun decks kind of have a problem with. Remember Dino Rabbit versus Dark World and Chaos Dragons. This is kind of the same deal, except the difference is Chaos Dragons weren't n nearly as competent in replenishing their resources as Elemental Dragons are, which is a huge issue for a deck like Chain Beat, where the whole point is to whittle away at your opponent's resources until you can get a mass field clearing, and then go for a big push. It doesn't work so well if your opponent doesn't ever lose resources off of their place, like, ever. They just keep getting them back. Sometimes they get even more resources than they had before, and that's obnoxious, and it really doesn't help that the deck doesn't give a damn about field clearing because they'll just come right back at you the next turn. It sucks for chain beat players. But, as with other decks this format, which I'm also going to cover in this video, really there are quite a few ways to get around it, and I think that it's important for us to look at those so that we don't get discouraged and wait until fall, because I think Chain Beat can still do pretty well this format if you're smart. So first I'm going to cover the Prophecy matchup. Now this is one that is generally our easiest matchup for this format. I mean, without Fire Fist in the game as much, and with Mermails going away kind of, um, I think that this is going to be our easiest matchup, and the reason is just because it's so easy to get rid of their monsters, and they can't get rid of your monsters. And it's just, it's just a really nice, um, nice, nice deal for us. But there are things that get in our way. Case in point, Spellbook of Wisdom, and the fact that they have so much recycling power anyway. So even if you get rid of their stuff, there's a pretty good chance that are going, they're going to get back. Other than that, it's a pretty good matchup. So in order to mitigate the problems like 
Spellbook of Wisdom, and like Spellbook of Judgment, which is a really big issue when you're playing against that deck. Um, I have a couple of cards that are really important. The main combo that I discovered at the regional that I went to that got me my Nats invite is the best two-card combo against Prophecy is Macrocosmos and Anti-Spell Fragrance, because with the Anti-Spell Fragrance, they have to wait a turn before they can activate their spells, which takes away their wisdom for when they're trying to put um, Priestess on the board. It takes away their, like, Magician Secrets, etc. play. It means that Judgment Day is going to be a little, quite a bit slower. They won't get as many, as many combos off of it. Um, and they have to really plan that in advance. The thing about macro is it adds on the fact that even if they do wait and activate those cards, and they do kind of plod through the game at your pace, which you absolutely love for a chain beat deck, they're, they don't have any resources to work with for Fate, or for Priestess, or for the Tower, which means three very good cards of theirs are pretty much useless. Um, so... That combo has been really effective. It's basically been auto-scoop material for me. The anti-spell fragrance on its own does a lot of work. The macro, not quite as much, but it's really good supplement, and it's a card that the deck really likes, that Chain Beat really likes anyway. Another really good card against Prophecy is Mind Crush, um, and Deck Lockdown is another really good one, particularly for this deck, um, since it slows them down to your speed once again. Against the Evil Swarm matchup. Now, this is where I get a lot of my o arguments in favor of running Photon Thrasher. Now, I'm I'm not going to keep on, like, I'm not going to argue with people. Photon Thrasher is a decent card for the deck. It works. And I'll actually tell you a little later, I'm starting to lean toward it a little more because of another combo that I discovered. But you really don't need it for the Evil Swarm matchup, which has been the main argument for putting it in the deck, is because you, if you have the Ori Calcos, your Thrasher can run over the Ophion, which is great. That's, that's absolutely fantastic, but Orichalcos is a one-of, and you don't exactly run three copies of a monster because you can use it really well with Monster Reborn, do you? Like, um, that just seems like there isn't a whole lot of point to it, even, you know, even if Thrasher is a pretty decent card. I think that you really don't need to worry about Ophion that much. Um, like, because of the sheer amount of chainable chainable stuff, like you've got a, two compulsories face down, a compulsory evac and a compulsory escape. You hit the compulsory evac, de evac device and they go for the p pandemic, then you chain your compulse escape and you still get the same result as if, um, if the compulse evac had worked just fine. Um, so I don't think Ophion is as big of an issue as people make it out to be for this deck. Um, simply just because there's so much spot removal in Chain B. It's ridiculous how much spot removal there is. Um, so you really don't have to worry about the Ophion as much. So the Evil Swarm matchup should be pretty good as long as you play, once again, very smart. So once again, that brings us to Dragosec. Now, there are a couple main issues with Dragosec. There's the fact that they can replenish themselves, the fact that they don't give a damn about field clearing, and most importantly, the fact that they can put a first tu or turn Light and Darkness Dragon on the board, which is pretty much the most obnoxious thing possible you can do to a Chain Beat player. Um, before, I figured you, ju you had... So, my thinking for taking down the first turn Light and Darkness in play, and this is kind of a preview that all my Chain Beat players get to see of one of my next videos, you get to see my thinking on this ahead of time. My previous thinking about taking down the Light and Darkness Dragon play is you had to stop it. You had to keep them from putting that Light and Darkness Dragon on the board. I figured that's as that's way too unreliable a thought process, and it's really hard to do is to stop that Light and Darkness Dragon from being played. So things I've been thinking about is like, how do you get rid of it afterward? And I've actually come up with a decent combo that actually involves Thrasher, and is a reason why you might want to run Thrasher, and why I might even run Thrasher, even though I've railed against it quite a bit, is a little card I like to call Vanities, or not Vanities, um, Volcanic Queen. So Volcanic Queen is that monster with 2,500 attack and 1,200 defense, or whatever it is, that you sack an opponent's monster, you special summon it to their side of the field, then you can't normal summon that turn. Well, Chain Beat doesn't normal summon a whole lot, but if you have it that first turn, if they do that first turn lad play, that's why you have your lovely little Photon Thrasher to work with. Um, so what you do is they play lad, and you're like, absolutely cool, you slap that vanity, or that volcanic 
queen. I'm going to be talking about Vanity's Emptiness later. That's why I've got that on my mind. You slap that Volcanic Queen in defense mode on top of that lad, and then you just run it over the th with the Thrasher. Lad's dealt with. Now you can get rid of their Draco sack. Now, one of the most important things that you need to remember for Chain B is, though this strategy is really good and it's going to be really effective in the future, and there's actually another strategy using Lava Golem that I'll talk about in the other video, um, but that isn't as relevant to Chain B. Um, though that is a great combo and it'll get rid of that first turn lat, it doesn't hold itself up because then you still have to deal with their massive amount of replenishing power. And there are, that's one of the reasons why macro is so important, um, particularly when you've got Vanity's Emptiness and Deck Lockdown, which are two really good cards, especially for Chain Beat against Dragosec. Now, um, Deck Lockdown kind of sucks if you really need to get that Rabbit, but I mean, if you already have the Rabbit or the Thunderbird, then you're in pretty good shape for um, putting that Deck Lockdown on the board, because you're not going to be summoning from your deck or added to your deck or anything like that, unless you need Duality or something. But if you've got that on the board, the Dragosac player isn't going to be doing so hot. And if you combine that with something like Macro Cosmos, where they have to re de deplete their resources in order to get rid of one of the cards, but then they still run out, have run out of resources to use their cards because of either Macro or because they decided the Macro is more important and they can't get a, get a hold of their resources because of Deck Lockdown. The same works for Vanity's Emptiness. In fact, it works almost even better, I'd say, for a Chain Beat player because your monsters never go to the grave. You're always banishing them, so you don't have to worry about about your opponent getting getting rid of the Vanity's Emptiness unless they use that Blaster combo, um, or they use MST, which I'm seeing a lot of Dragosac decks aren't even using um, more than like one MST. So it's not really something you have to worry about that much, um, especially considering the fact that you could always just like chain your Vanity's Emptiness to their attempt to summon a monster, and then they've already used those resources to summon that monster, and then they can't do it because of the Vanity's Emptiness. It's a great play, especially if you've got the macro. So, for a quick review against your Prophecy matchup, really good things you want to run are um, Anti-Spell Fragrance, Macro Cosmos, and then, of course, Mind Crush. Then, against Evil Swarm, really, you've got it covered. Chill out. <laughs> against Dragons, that that volcanic queen and thrasher play is going to be really critical if the um if the lad comes out later then chances are you're not going to need to normal summon because you've already got your monsters going in and out of play um so you won't need that normal summon that she takes away from you and then you've got that thrasher if you really need to play her first turn then you can do that first that first turn volcanic queen into thrasher run of the queen things work out for you in the end. And then you've also got Vanity's Emptiness, which is really effective for a Chain Beat deck. And then you've got Deck Lockdown and Macro. Combine all those things, even Soul Drain, Mind Drain. Um, those are just slightly less effective against other decks, so, um, so I'd opt against them. But those are the things that I would run against the current format to make it suck slightly less for your Chain Beat players. Um, so, as always, if you guys have any comments that you need to leave, of course, leave them in the comments. If you, there is anything that I missed, let me know. If you liked it, hit that thumbs up button. If you didn't like it, let me know why. And subscribe for more Chain Beat videos. I gotta jet, guys. See ya.